My sister's husband flirted with me at a family dinner, but it turns out it was part of a twisted test she orchestrated due to trust issues from her ex. Now, my mom is spreading lies about me to the entire family, and I've made the decision to cut them both out of my life. This situation is beyond insane, so bear with me as I get through all the details. My sister got married about three, four months ago, and after the wedding, honeymoon, and getting back to work, we didn't see much of each other. But our family has a tradition where we all get together once a month for a big dinner at our parents' house. This dinner was for August. During that dinner, my brother-in-law, B.I.L., started acting weird. And by weird, I mean he was openly flirting with me. He complimented my body, ignored my sister, and was just generally acting in a way I never expected. It was strange, not only because his wife, my sister, was sitting right there, but also because they had only been married a few months, and he had never behaved this way toward me before. Everyone in the room could feel the awkwardness, but no one said anything. I felt so uncomfortable that I ended up leaving early, but once I got home, I felt gross. I can't even describe how unsettled it made me. Later that night, I messaged my sister to let her know how uncomfortable her husband's behavior had made me. I told her that it was weird that he felt comfortable enough to say those things with our whole family there, and that if she didn't want to be in the middle, I was willing to confront him myself. His behavior was so inappropriate that I even FaceTimed my boyfriend, who was away for work at the time, just to vent about it. I told him how my BL's behavior toward me shifted so drastically from treating me like family to making me feel really uneasy. My boyfriend was understandably pissed, and I was still trying to make sense of it. My sister didn't respond to my message until the next day when she asked to meet up. I assumed she'd be upset, and that her husband would apologize for his behavior. But when we met, she dropped a bombshell. The whole thing had been a test, and apparently, I had passed. I was so confused. What kind of test? And why? My sister then explained that she'd asked her husband to behave that way on purpose, to see how I would react if he ever did say something like that seriously. My reaction, she said, proved I could be trusted around him. I was absolutely floored. Why would she even think I couldn't be trusted? She then brought up her ex-husband, and everything started making a twisted kind of sense. Here's the backstory. My sister had been married before. She was 27, and they divorced about 10 months into the marriage. Her ex turned out to be a psycho. The kicker? I had introduced them. We all got along great, and they seemed like the perfect couple. Until they got married. At the time, I was living with them because it was closer to my job, and I paid rent while also helping out with cooking and cleaning. That's when strange things started happening. My underwear kept going missing. At first, I thought it was a simple mix-up with my sister's laundry, but it kept happening to the point where I had to buy new underwear almost weekly. I jokingly accused my sister of taking it, but she was adamant it wasn't her. I eventually brushed it off. Then, I found out the real reason. My former brother-in-law was stealing my underwear. I don't even want to know what he was doing with it, but I was so disgusted. It turned out that he never really loved my sister and had only married her to get closer to me. I pressed charges against him, got a restraining order, and my sister divorced him immediately after learning the truth. That whole situation was traumatic for both of us, and it took me a long time to recover. Now, my sister is using that experience to justify her test with her current husband. She claimed she needed to know if she could trust me around him because she still harbored suspicion that I must have done something to lead her ex-husband on. I was furious and hurt that she would twist something traumatic into a reason to distrust me. I told her that if she really believed I had done something wrong, she shouldn't speak to me again. My family found out about the whole situation, and most of them agreed that what my sister did was insane. But my mom, she stood by her, saying that my sister was just trying to protect herself after being hurt so badly before. I told my mom that I wouldn't have been as upset if my sister had just come to me and been honest about her insecurities, but instead, she set up this elaborate, manipulative test. Why was my sister so convinced I had ulterior motives? I didn't know her ex-husband would turn out to be a creep, so why am I being punished for it? She insisted that I should have picked up on signs that her ex was into me, but how could I have known that? He seemed completely in love with her, and I wasn't privy to his inner thoughts. A family dinner was scheduled earlier this month, and I told my parents I wouldn't attend if my sister and her husband were going to be there. 
It wasn't that I never wanted to see them again, I just needed time to cool off. My mom assured me they wouldn't attend, so I agreed to go. But when I arrived, they were both there, waiting for me. It felt like an ambush. My sister demanded I apologize for my reaction, claiming that it was my fault the test was necessary in the first place. I snapped. I told her to delete my number and forget she ever had a sister if she truly believed I had done anything wrong. Update 1. A lot has happened over the past few days. After receiving advice and taking time to reflect, I decided to meet with my family again, this time with my boyfriend by my side for support. It was incredibly hard to look any of them in the eye after the way they had treated me, but I knew I had to face it. During the conversation, my mom dropped another bombshell. She admitted she had known about my sister's test from the start and had even supported it. I was shattered. My own mother had been complicit in a plan to have my sister's husband harass me just to test my loyalty. This hurt more than anything because my mom knew how deeply I had struggled after the first incident with my sister's ex-husband. She was well aware of how difficult it had been for me to trust people again, yet she went along with this awful scheme. My sister, of course, didn't budge. She continued insisting that I was somehow at fault for her ex-husband's behavior and that I enjoyed the attention he gave me. She even said that because her current husband was acting, it didn't count as harassment. I told her she shouldn't expect any communication from me until I received a real apology from both her and her husband. My mother was the most heartbreaking part of the whole ordeal. She told me I was overreacting and that I should just be happy I had passed my sister's test. She even had the audacity to suggest that we could all move on from it now. I was in total disbelief. I asked her why she was supporting such ridiculous behavior, and she said it was because she loved my sister and wanted her to be happy. I asked if she loved me as much as my sister, and she said yes, but her hesitation made it clear that she was torn. I told her I wanted an apology for her role in the scheme, but she refused so I gave her the same ultimatum I gave my sister and her husband. Until I get a real apology, I'm not speaking to any of them. As a result, I'll probably have to go low contact with my dad and brother, even though they've been incredibly supportive. They still live with my mom, and I don't know how much I can be around her without feeling completely betrayed. On a positive note, my boyfriend and I are visiting his family in the US soon. I've never met them before, but they've been so welcoming and supportive from afar. I'm excited to finally meet them, and they might end up being the only family I have left at this point. I also requested an emergency therapy appointment, which has been moved up to tomorrow. I'm so thankful for the advice and support I've received from strangers online, and I know that without it, I might have caved in and apologized just to make peace, repeating this toxic cycle. I'm learning to stand up for myself and to stop putting others' feelings above my own well-being, Thank you all for helping me see the truth in this situation. Update 2. It's hard to believe things have escalated this much, but here I am, losing a sister and mother in the same week. A few days ago, I sent out save the dates for my upcoming wedding, only to get a call from an aunt who accused me of trying to seduce both of my sister's husbands. She said I was brave for inviting people to my wedding after supposedly ruining my sister's life. I was stunned. Apparently, my sister has been spreading lies about me to the entire family, claiming that I tried to seduce both her ex-husband and current husband. I defended myself, explaining what really happened, but my aunt didn't believe me. She said my mom had already confirmed the story. I was furious. After all the pain and betrayal, my mom had gone behind my back to support my sister's lies. I called her immediately and told her I was done. I had forgiven her for being complicit in my sister's test, but now I knew that she had never been on my side at all. She allowed people to spread horrible lies about me, her own daughter, and I couldn't take it anymore. I told her I never wanted to see or speak to her again. I also wrote a letter to my sister, making it clear that while I was sorry for what she had been through with her ex-husband, I would never forgive her for lying about me. I told her she needed serious help and that I was done trying to fix things between us. I wished her the best but made it clear that I no longer considered her my sister. My fiancé and I have decided to have a small town hall wedding with just a couple of witnesses. I'm so grateful to have him in my life. Without his support, I don't know how I would have survived this nightmare. I've come to realize that family isn't always the people you're born with. 
It's the people who truly stand by you through the worst. I've chosen to see this as a blessing in disguise. This chapter of my life is officially closed, and I can now focus on moving forward. In response to some questions, my dad doesn't speak to my mom's side of the family, so he had no idea these lies were spreading. My brother has been trying to stay out of it since he still lives at home, but he's been incredibly supportive of me. As for my extended family, I haven't told them the truth yet because I'm embarrassed, but I know that even if I did, they might not believe me. My mom's side has never really liked me because I'm dating a white guy, and they think I'm ashamed of my culture, even though I was planning on having an Indian wedding. I realize now that no matter what proof I have, they're going to believe what they want to believe. Update 3. This might be the hardest thing I've ever had to admit, but I think it's the only way for me to finally move on and live a normal life again. My sister has been telling a completely twisted version of events to our extended family. I only found out when I sent out save the dates for my wedding and got a call from an aunt who told me I was brave for inviting people after what I had done. She said I was wrong for trying to seduce both of my sister's husbands and that my fiance was an idiot for standing by me. I was in total shock. I tried to defend myself, but she didn't believe me, saying that my mom had already confirmed the story. I was livid. My own mother had gone behind my back and supported my sister's lies, making me out to be some kind of villain. I called her and told her I was done. I had already forgiven her once for supporting my sister's ridiculous test, but now I realized she had never really been on my side. She allowed people to spread horrible lies about me. Her own daughter. I told her I never wanted to see or speak to her again. I wrote a letter to my sister, outlining four main points. I'm sorry for what she's been through, but I can't forgive her actions. She needs to seek help for what her ex-husband put her through. I'm stunned that she thought she could lie about me and get away with it. I wished her well, but told her I never wanted to hear from her again. My fiancé and I have decided to have a small town hall wedding. I'm incredibly grateful to have him by my side, and I'm ready to move forward with my life. Family isn't always about blood. It's about who stands by you when everything falls apart. I'm choosing to close this chapter of my life and focus on the future. Commentary time. This story is a deeply unsettling portrayal of trust, betrayal, and resilience. OP's experience reveals just how destructive unchecked insecurities and manipulative tests can be. Her sister's insistence on orchestrating a loyalty test reflects a level of distrust that's far from healthy, rooted in unresolved trauma rather than any actual wrongdoing on OP's part. The fact that OP's own mother was complicit in this setup only intensifies the heartbreak. It's especially sad to see that despite OP's prior support and empathy during her sister's traumatic first marriage, she's now the one paying the price for a situation she had no control over. The emotional impact of the lies that her sister and mother spread throughout the family is truly damaging. OP's decision to stand her ground, demand respect, and eventually walk away speaks volumes about her strength and self-respect. By choosing to go low contact with her family and cut out those who refuse to see the truth, she's taking brave steps toward protecting her mental health and building a supportive environment. Family dynamics can be complex and painful, but OP's courage in standing up against manipulation and betrayal is truly inspiring. It's refreshing to see her embrace the idea that family isn't defined by blood alone. As she looks to a new chapter with her fiancé, it's clear she's putting herself first, refusing to let toxic relationships overshadow her happiness. Here's to OP finding peace and a supportive chosen family who values and respects her unconditionally. Thank you for following this powerful story of resilience and self-worth. If you found this journey as compelling as I did, be sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe for more stories that remind us of the importance of self-respect and boundaries. See you in the next one.